the National Weather Service now confirms that a tornado touched down in Norman, Oklahoma on Friday afternoon near the University of Oklahoma campus. The twister caused damage to homes and knocked down trees and power lines. We're going to get a live report from Eric Fisher there in Norman at the top of the hour. And we had some minor injuries also that were reported, but more powerful storms are in the forecast now as we go through today into tonight. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a major mm -hmm. outbreak already, too. Tornado watches are out. Welcome back to Weekend Now. The Weather Channel is Tornado Central, so we're extending our live coverage to keep you ahead of today's severe weather threat. And, you know, we're going to be live right around the clock. That continues through the overnight hours. We have live team coverage with Jim Cantori and also with Mike Seidel. And right now they are stationed in, I believe it's Lincoln in Wichita, although that could change. And Eric Fisher, he's in Oklahoma City. But again, we could see them relocated depending on the threat. All right, we already have had some hail reports and some flooding rains as well. Heather, where has some of the worst of this been? Well, you know, as we look here, uh, what we're watching really closely now, it's in Nebraska and Kansas where we've been seeing some of this. You can see the hail reports and some of these reports here um, that hail pretty large. You can see over uh, two inches. So that is significant. That's where you start to see that damage coming in to roofs. You're going to have those cars, problems with that. Keep this in mind, too. You, if you have have an opportunity to bring your vehicle inside if you're out ahead of some of these storms you're going to be much better off and things certainly Jeff as you know are going to get worse now as we continue through the day all right thank you very much Heather and that 2.8 inches that's about that size that's baseball size hail folks that's going to do some damage if you're out and about all right, what we've got going here are two tornado watches. The northern one is the newest one. That is out until 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. That's from Nebraska into northern Kansas, and then from central Kansas into western Nebraska. That is another tornado watch out until 6 local time. Those are both what we call PDS watches or particularly dangerous situations. Plenty of lightning being reported across this region as well, and you can see all of the severe weather warnings. Those are the little yellow and or or in one case, a red kind of uh, triangle or uh, parallelogram, I guess is the best way to put it, rectangle. This is the tornado warning, and this affects the counties of Jewell, Mitchell, and Osborne. That's out until 12.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Some rotation indicated on Doppler radar with this fast-moving storm. And that's really going to be a hallmark of all of these storms, how quickly they're going to move. You're not going to have a lot of time to react because they're going to be moving at 50 or even 60 miles an hour. So they're going to be zipping along here. This particular storm moving up toward the Ross area and Mankato in Kansas as we head on through about the next 45 minutes or so. It's not going to waste any time. But large hail, damaging winds, lots of lightning as we saw, and again, more tornado reports we'll probably start to see. Across the border up into Nebraska, we've been watching two cells, kind of twins of each other. The one to the east is the really the big one. This has had some reports of up to baseball size hail moving past the Petersburg area right now and generally headed off toward the Norfolk, Nebraska vicinity. Again, this is racing along at about 55 or 60 miles an hour. It's a nasty looking storm and again, some of the reports that we're getting of hail up to at least least baseball size and you can see on this particular what we call the vertically integrated liquid a fancy name for an indication on the radar of which storms have hail and which don't you can see the western storm really not all that impressive but look at all the pink and the purple here that's an indication of some very very large hail maybe upwards of two to three inches in diameter Petersburg already has reported two inch hail for about seven minutes with wind gusts at 50 miles an hour not a very good day up here across parts of Nebraska. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated and we'll have a live report from Eric Fisher at the top of the hour. Heather, what about the timing of these storms? Well, Jeff, as you know, the worst of it is yet to come, but that leaves you time to plan ahead. You know, where are you going to be going when things really start rocking? Also, gather some supplies that you can take with you. You know, have that battery operated radio so that when you're sitting down in your basement, you can actually listen to what's going on. You can know when you're able to come 
come out again or whether you need to stay down there. And you know, we can show you some of the timing. Keep in mind two flashlights, you want to have that. And then also just maybe throw a couple of bottles of water down there and shoes because you know what? If something happens, you're going to want shoes to be able to walk around in any kind of destruction. Wichita, Kansas, very dangerous situation for you. Nine out of 10. Notice that timing, folks. Again, it's going to be hitting for many of you during a time when people are sleeping. My advice is plan ahead now on where your kids could go, if not anything else. You know, do you have a basement? That's a great place for them to have a camp out tonight. Maybe grandma's house. Does she have a basement? Otherwise, an interior room. Just think about some of these areas where potentially you may be going. And again, you know, there's just so much you can do, Jeff. You just got to really plan ahead because as you said, we don't have much time once these storms hit. Yeah. All right, take a look at this water spout off the coast of, no, not Florida, Ireland. This was captured on video near the town of Bray, about 12 miles south of Dublin on the island's east coast. No damage was reported. So we're seeing some severe weather, at least uh, kind of an indication of it, even in Europe. But most of it is in this country. And, of course, you can always get the very latest severe weather information right here on the Weather Channel. And, Heather, right now we have two particularly dangerous situation tornado watches out. Yeah, and, you know, when you see that, you know, that's not something you see every time that we do have tornado watches out. You need to take this very seriously today. If you are in one of these areas, really watch what's going on, but also plan ahead because, you know, as we go through the day, the threat for tornadoes is going to ramp up. Now, uh, the lower half of this, we're watching this until 6 o'clock Eastern, the northern half until 7 o'clock Eastern. But as we continue to go through the evening and the overnight, we are going to be watching for more watches coming out. And again, this is one of those days where we are very concerned about this becoming a really big ordeal with numerous tornadoes tornadoes breaking out. So potentially an outbreak of tornadoes. Right now you just saw some of the uh, the radar and the lightning strikes showing up. Lightning too is a killer. So remember that don't go out in the, under these conditions. Now the yellow here, these are severe thunderstorm warnings that we're watching. Take these seriously, but again, uh, not as uh, crucial to see these in terms of taking shelter as when we see the tornado warnings popping up. We've had some and we're going to see a lot more of the warnings developing as we go through the afternoon. And you can watch those. Some of these storms have been dropping some very large hail. And we have had some reports, you know, where we're looking at some baseball size hail and, and you know, approaching some of that softball size hail. So this too can do a lot of damage to your property, to the trees, to your home, to your car. We'll continue to monitor some of these storms as they sweep here through Nebraska and continue to move in this northeasterly direction and with this you know we've had some reports of hail here up to about three inches in size around Petersburg so that's large hail and again that's damaging hail again I really want to emphasize though that this is going to become a very very dangerous situation look at the white that we have here on our Torcon index when you see the nines and when you see the white take this extremely seriously Jeff as you know um, this really could become a very dangerous and even deadly uh, evening and overnight. Yeah, you're right, Heather. As a matter of fact, we are just in the beginnings of it now. And as you mentioned, it will continue in through the overnight hours, maybe even into tomorrow morning. Another resource that we have is weather.com. You can always go online and get the very latest information on this big outbreak across the plains. And of course, when you click on that, you can get the latest storm watch. And you can also, of course, get the map that Heather just showed with the greatest threat and our updated Torcon numbers for some of the big cities as well as some of the smaller cities. When you go to the Torcon uh, icon, you can click on that. And anywhere across parts of Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, that's where you can find out what the Torcon is in your area. Heather? All right, and also we have some breaking weather news right now. We do have a new tornado warning that we want to share with you. As you can see, this working its way here across the state of Kansas. More details straight ahead.
Congress doesn't even begin to describe the tornado threat that we're facing this weekend. The Storm Prediction Center is issuing dire warnings, and they only do that a handful of times a year. And our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, upping the Torcon Index to nines in several locations in the central U.S. Well, that includes here in the Oklahoma City area. I'm meteorologist Eric Fisher. We are standing by waiting for storms that will likely fire later on tonight. However, already seeing them off to our north and west. We'll keep it covered for you throughout the afternoon here on the Weather Channel. And thanks so much for joining us on Weekend Now, an important day to be watching us on Definitely. Heather's Hash. All right, I'm Jeff Morrow, the Storm Prediction Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, using some very strong mm -hmm. language. We don't hear it a lot to warn people about the seriousness of this expected tornado outbreak. You know, the last time that, you know, we were looking at something like this with such dire warnings, uh, that was before the big tornado outbreak last month on March 2nd. The Weather Channel, of course, is Tornado Central. We're going to help you through all of this. Look at some of this incredible video. This is yesterday's tornado. This was in Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah, watch as some of these power poles get splintered and the wires start to snap and they start dragging the rest of the poles down like dominoes going down. The National Weather Service now confirms that this was a tornado that hit in the Norman area, but no EF rating has been issued as of yet. And our Eric Fisher joining us now. He is in Oklahoma City, and we were watching um, some of that video being shot near to here. Yeah, Eric, nice weather. Maybe right now, a little breezy out there, but you're expecting things to change as we head into this evening. down in Norman, Oklahoma earlier on today covering some of that tornado damage and you know just the appetizer to what's going to be the main course in terms of storms as we head through the day today and those winds out of the south southeast mid-level winds coming out of the west southwest from a wind dynamic uh, perspective we certainly have all the ingredients coming together for some strong tornadoes as we head into the afternoon and evening now at the moment take a look out across the lake here this is Lake Hefner in Oklahoma City you can see some folks are actually taking advantage of those gusty winds for now as storms won't be coming into the area until later on this afternoon or evening time it looks like around sundown in Oklahoma City, that will be our go time. But in western Oklahoma, much earlier, already starting to see some of those storms beginning to fire, and especially off to our north in Nebraska and Kansas, seeing some of those stronger storms and tornado warnings already developing at a pretty early hour in the day. So it's going to be a very long day for many of us here. And the bottom line is just want to make sure everyone's taking it seriously. We're in it for the long haul. We're likely to be looking at 18 hours or more of a big tornado threat. Impacts right around here in Oklahoma City. Again, severe storms absolutely in the forecast. We'll be talking about the main threat right around sundown and then into the first part of the overnight. And those supercells will likely come together in a line of thunderstorms as we head through the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning as they approach eastern Oklahoma and over toward Tulsa and eventually Arkansas. So this is something we'll be watching all day for you here. And uh, Jeff, before I throw it back to you, one of the things we haven't been going through yet is seeing any breaks of sunshine just starting to develop here in Oklahoma City. That could be a big factor heading into the afternoon. Oh, definitely. The more sun that you get, actually, a lot of people don't realize this, the worse it can be because it'll start to really get unstable out there. All right, thank you very much. That's Eric Fisher reporting just outside Oklahoma City. And Eric picked a good spot there. He'll be able to see the horizon very well over that lake, and he'll be able to see the severe weather hopefully coming toward him. And they will be moving very quickly as they are right now. Now, there are two PDS watches out. When we see PDS, we mean particularly dangerous situation. That's what the National Weather Service calls them. The northern one out till 7 local time, the southern one out till 6. You can see all the lightning strikes in here. How many in the last 15 minutes? About a thousand or so strikes, and we've actually seen as much as about 1,200 a little bit earlier. Now, each one of these little boxes, the yellow ones that are flashing, and one red one just west of Concordia, those are either severe thunderstorm watches, those are the yellow ones, or warning I should say, or tornado warnings. And that's the case around Mankato in Kansas right now. Till 1.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time for Jewell County, we have a tornado warning. Doppler radar indicating some rotation on this particular storm as it heads up toward Burr Oak in the next few minutes and then eventually past Superior, Hardy, and Nelson as we head on through the next hour. Again, these storms are racing, so if the severe weather approaches you, you're not going to have all that much time to react. This storm we've been watching for quite some 
some time. It's basically moving along a warm front here. And I got to tell you, folks, it's a nasty looking storm moving toward the Norfolk, Nebraska area. Already just east of Petersburg, we've had hail reports up to three inches in diameter. That's approaching softball size between baseball and softball size. And this is still a nasty storm headed east of Norfolk, Nebraska. Heather, what about the timing of all this severe weather? Well, what we know, Jeff, are things are only going to get worse. We're going to ramp things up as we continue to go through the afternoon hours. And after dark is when we're going to have the greatest threat for many areas. Now, some of you look at this, like in Wichita, for example, uh, not only a very dangerous Torcon number nine out of 10 folks, that is not a good number, a extremely huge threat, but also the timing of this when a lot of you will be sleeping. Uh, my advice is if you do have a basement, uh, maybe have a camp out with the kids, sleep down there, at least have the kids sleep down there because it is going to be very dangerous for many areas that we see here in the red, especially those of you that live in these areas of the white parts of Nebraska, Kansas into Oklahoma. That's where we have our greatest risk. Jeff, I'm very, very concerned about what could be happening as we continue into the evening and overnight. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, our live team coverage continues next with Mike Seidel. Hey, Jeff and Heather at the National Weather Service office here in Wichita, Kansas. They're ramping up. They're bringing in extra staffing. And we're right here under the Ray Dome, which will be tracking those severe thunderstorms, possibly tornadic. We've got a lot of issues, including many activities here in Wichita. We'll check in with the Weather Service next. Well, the National Weather Service now confirms a tornado did touch down in Norman, Oklahoma on Friday afternoon near the University of Oklahoma campus. The twister did cause some damage to homes, knocked down trees, and as you can see here, ripped down some power lines as well. There were some minor injuries, but uh, nothing serious. More powerful storms, obviously, in the forecast for the rest of this afternoon tonight and even into the early part of tomorrow. Heather, where's the worst of it right now? Well, you know, we are seeing, Jeff, you know, some tornado warnings, and they've been popping up occasionally. You also note here that we have a large area where we have a tornado watch. This is in Nebraska, Kansas, and reaching into parts of northern Oklahoma. So we do have areas of concern right now. But I have to tell you, things are going to get much, much worse as we continue through today into the overnight hours. Here's one of the areas where we do have a tornado warning. And just in case uh, you're trying to figure this out, the red ones, those are the tornado warnings. The yellow, those are severe thunderstorms storm warnings that we monitor and as you note here we're going to continue to watch this activity uh, moving northward now with these warnings this is radar indicated uh, that there's the potential that there's a tornado with this sometimes we have spotters spotting them on the ground sometimes we identify them through the radar so that's what we see here with these and also we've been seeing a lot of these producing some large hail move to an interior room if you're out ahead of this uh, Burr Oak Superior Nelson some of the areas that were we're watching here also Smith Center you're out ahead of it so now is the time to go ahead and take cover uh, get into interior room get into the basement that's the best place to be but I know some of you do not have basements many of you do not and also if you're way out ahead of these storms uh, plan ahead for what you'll do later on today and in the overnight hours because a lot of this will be hitting overnight again you can see Norfolk and then some of the areas that we are watching right around there again these are severe thunderstorm warnings that we are monitoring Lightning also is deadly, folks, so do not be out and about under these conditions. And by the way, when you see that little curve, uh, that is indicating there, too, it's sort of that backward sea, that very strong winds with these. Now, the storms are expected here in Oklahoma City to continue right on into the very late overnight, and severe storms are likely large hail, strong winds, and again, that chance for tornadoes. Jeff, my big concern, of course, is going to be that a lot of this will be hitting when people are sleeping. Yeah, overnight tonight. So be very vigilant. Well, from Oklahoma to Nebraska, as we just saw, conditions right for what the National Weather Service is calling, quote, a high-end life-threatening event. Right in the middle of that zone lies Wichita, Kansas, and that's where meteorologist Mike Seidel is. Mike, uh, there are no thunderstorms near you right now, but boy, it seems awfully windy. It is windy. We've had gusts up to 39 miles an hour. That's tropical storm force. And let's bring in the warning coordination meteorologist here. We're right outside the National Weather Service here in Wichita. Chance Hayes is back with us. We were here a couple years ago, had a big hail storm. Yep. Uh, our concern is later on, and what we're looking for is some heating, and also we're waiting for that big disturbance to come in from the uh, four corners. Oh, absolutely. That's It's kind of a set and wait. We've got some scattered thunderstorms out there, basically going to produce some large hail, strong winds to go along with what we already right. have. 
but we're waiting for that sun to break and to get that upper support and storms will redevelop later today. What about the timing here in central Kansas, Wichita, Salina, Russell, these, these areas? Right now, the key timing that we're looking for is probably around that 5 o'clock range, give or take an hour, when storms may begin to develop. But I'm getting nervous that they may last a little bit or late, or a little bit later and be in over the overnight hours. And we've got a lot going on this evening. In fact, uh, three high schools have moved their proms yes. because they were in areas they didn't feel safe. One back to the school, one to FEMA approved store, uh, shelters right. where they have shelter. And also we have the Miranda Lambert concert tonight. So a lot going on. A lot of people uh, certainly I know uh, on, on deck to uh, be advised of maybe heading to a lower elevation. Oh, that's absolutely correct. We've got tons of people outdoors. They just need to be paying attention. Be vigilant. Use their eyes. If it doesn't look right out there, it probably isn't, and they need to get to shelter immediately. And we'll be checking back with you uh, through the afternoon. You've got extra staffing coming in to yes. uh, monitor the situation. So far, so good here. Wichita behind us, that's what we're using. That's one of those uh, ray domes. And you've got the dual pole now up, right? Yes, we do. We were one of the first offices to get dual pole radar. So we got dual pole. We have Doppler, uh, Jeff Morrow. We're all ready for what could be a very dangerous late afternoon. And as Chance mentioned, these storms could be overnight tonight. All right, and that can make them doubly dangerous. Thank you very much, Mike Seidel, reporting from Wichita, Kansas. Still ahead on weekend now, we are keeping an eye on the severe weather. Obviously, we'll show you the areas of greatest impact coming. Some breaking weather information. New tornado warning has just come out. This is for Russell County in central Kansas. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located six miles southwest of the town of Russell, moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. Radar indicating the rotation here. Some of the towns that might be included would be Russell, Bunker, Bunker Hill, Luray, Lucas, Wilson Lake, and Waldo. Also Interstate 70 between mile markers 177 and 181. Of course, we'll continue to keep. All right, we have a tornado warning for Russell County. This is in central Kansas. It's out for about another 15 minutes till 145 local time. This is a Doppler radar indicated tornado. In other words, they're seeing some rotation on the Doppler radar. You can see the path of it generally off to the northeast rather quickly at about between 40 and 50 miles an hour. This may be crossing Interstate 70 as well. So be aware of some nasty weather there in central Kansas. And welcome back to Weekend Now. The Weather Channel, of course, is Tornado Central, and we are extending our live coverage to keep you ahead of today's severe weather threat. Yeah, we'll be live around the clock with live team coverage with Jim Cantori on up into the Lincoln, Nebraska area, Mike Seidel in Wichita, Kansas, and Eric Fisher just outside of Oklahoma City. And uh, speaking of Eric Fisher, we're gonna take you live to Eric right now. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's a bit windy where you're at, Eric. Uh, what else are you anticipating? Well, we're seeing some big changes in terms of the sky cover here, Heather and Jeff. You know, earlier on today, all day long, we're under overcast skies. Keeps the instability down a little bit, but now the sun is coming out. You can probably see it on my face as we speak. That's a problem. That leads to more instability, a better chance of rapidly rising air. We've already got the wind shear, so the ingredients really coming together here in Oklahoma City. You take a look at the radar right now. Most of the storms are off to our north and west. You take a look at the storms in Kansas and Nebraska. That's a different mechanism working. That's low pressure deepening off to their west just outside of Colorado, and you've got a warm front stretching across Nebraska. That's what's spawning some of those storms. Down here in Oklahoma, we're waiting for the dry line, which is a separation between that warm, humid air and very dry air off to its west. That's in West Texas, Western Oklahoma right now, and that's going to traverse the state as we head through the evening approaching Oklahoma City. So that's what we're going to be watching for. Take a look at the impacts here in Oklahoma City. We're expecting around sunset, likely where these storms would first start to come in, and then going into the overnight, it will be much earlier across Western Oklahoma. We already have a lot of wind shear. We're already talking about plenty of instability, and we could be seeing supercells develop this afternoon. So people need to know uh, that they have to or keep an eye out rather for the warnings that will be issued no doubt as we head throughout the day if you take a look across uh, Hefner Lake here we're expecting on the southwestern sky to see some of those storms rolling in later on today we'll be here all afternoon and uh, Jeff certainly will be keeping an eye to those skies any more sunshine we could be up near 80 degrees before too long yeah and that's not necessarily a good thing at all as you were mentioning you get that sun out and it increases the instability thank you very much Eric Fisher again Eric's going to be a busy guy as we head on through tonight and maybe even into tomorrow morning. All right, he's standing by outside of Oklahoma City. 
He is down here. The big storms, as he was mentioning, firing up to his north. But I'll tell you what, the main catalyst, which is going to be driving most of the severe weather, particularly as we head into tonight, is that curly Q, that spin, if you will, out here in the southwest. As that pocket of cold air moves out, it's going to enhance some of the big thunderstorms well to the south into Oklahoma and Texas. Right now, most of the action is up here in Kansas and Nebraska. As Eric mentioned, right along a warm front here near Omaha, up to about, uh, oh, uh, maybe Norfolk, Nebraska. This northern tornado watch is out until 7. There's a southern one here from Kansas into Oklahoma out until 6 local time. These are both what we call PDS watches or particularly dangerous situations. Now we have some new tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. Each one of the boxes here, the yellow boxes, are severe thunderstorm warnings, but I want to hone in on a tornado warning here for Russell County. We talked about this at the top of the show. And this storm, again, Doppler radar indicating some pretty strong rotation. They've now issued a tornado warning just north of that up toward the Cheyenne area. This is in Mitchell and Osborne counties. And that's just because this storm in Russell County is headed in your direction. Also large hail and some very gusty straight line winds as well as a lot of lightning can be expected with that storm as well. Farther north, severe thunderstorms now crossing the border from Kansas into Nebraska. And there's one particular storm I really want to hone in on here, and that's the one right here. I think we can get in a little bit closer. This one's been going for a long time, kind of riding to the east along a warm front, headed from Norfolk, Nebraska, over toward the Pilger area in Wakefield. Right now, Madison, Pierce, Staunton, and Wayne counties are under severe thunderstorm warnings. This one doesn't have a tornado warning on it, but boy, it's had some reports of up to three and maybe close to four inch diameter hail. That's getting up to near softball size, folks. So this one's moving east rather quickly. It'll be over around the Wakefield area just after the top of the hour. Again, large hail and lots of lightning. You can see what we call the vills are shrinking a little bit, but this is an indication that this cell has some very, very large hail with it moving east of the Norfolk, Nebraska. I'll be interested to see what kind of hail reports we get out of Norfolk. Again, we've had uh, some reports of up to three and four inch diameter hail. All right, now let's get the timeline of some of these storms. Here's Heather. Well, that's right, because our tornado threat is going to ramp up as we go through the afternoon into the evening and the overnight. And the concern will be for some of you that this is coming in during a time when you are sleeping and that can be extremely dangerous. You know, a weather radio, you can go pick that up right now if you're not in the heart of the storms and you can use that tonight to keep you alert if you need to go down into your basement. My suggestion too for some of these areas like Omaha where it's an eight, I just showed you Wichita where it's a nine, that's a Torcon number, very serious situation. And in some of these areas where you'll find it coming into the overnight hours, sleep downstairs or um, in an interior room if you have that in your home. Otherwise, maybe does grandma and she's nearby, you could send the kids there at least to spend the night in the basement. Tell them they have a little camp out. That's what my kids do. They'll go down in the basement on these kind of nights, have a camp out. They love it. It's fun for them and you know they're safe. As we look here, 9 out of 10 on that Torcon value. South Central Nebraska, North Central Kansas. Folks, 9s, these are extremely dangerous conditions and we're very concerned about potentially an outbreak of tornadoes as we go through the evening and overnight hours. So Jeff, as you are well aware of, um, this could turn dangerous and deadly. Definitely, and we'll have you covered throughout the rest of the afternoon today and through tonight. And our live team coverage continues coming up with Mike Seidel in Wichita, Kansas. And Jeff, we're inside the National Weather Service who has issued that tornado warning for Russell County up here uh, on the screen. We'll come back and find out if they're going to extend that. It goes until 45 after the hour. Also find out what's in store here for later today and tonight from South Central Kansas from the Weather Service office here in Wichita. All right, we've got some breaking news with more tornado warnings coming out here. We'll get to those in a second. Just wanted to reiterate the area of biggest danger right now. This will shift as we head on through the overnight. But for right now, from extreme northern Oklahoma, particularly here in Kansas, into southern and eastern areas of Nebraska, that's where our biggest threat is. That's where the tornado watches are out currently. There are both particularly dangerous situation watches, what we call PDS. Now, we're flashing here the warnings that are out. Those are the severe thunderstorm warnings with the yellow flashing but we have a tornado warning here we've been telling you about it moving through russell county and now moving just about out of russell county on off to the north there it is this is about set to expire in the next three or four minutes 
in Russell County, but then moving north into Mitchell and Osborne counties. That's out until 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time till the top of the hour. Those might get extended, but some Doppler radar indication of rotation here as this continues to move off toward the northeast. Now we have had already some reports of some very, very strong winds within this storm as the storm moved over the Russell Airport. 74 mile an hour winds, hurricane force wind gusts. That's not with a tornado. That's just a straight downburst kind of wind, which you can also get, of course, with these severe thunderstorms. Let's go a little bit farther north. We'll cross the border into Nebraska, and we've been watching these storms moving right along a warm front. And this one in particular has had a history of large and damaging hail. The biggest I think we've seen is three inch diameter hail so far, but Madison, Staunton, and Wayne counties are under severe thunderstorm warnings in eastern Nebraska. Again, it does look like maybe the vills or the vertically integrated liquid. We look at that to see if there's a hail core in these storms. Looks like that may be weakening a little bit. Right now, Norfolk's been reporting hail up to about 1.8 inches. That's a little smaller than what we saw just a little bit farther west. We'll keep you updated on the severe weather threat, but right now, let's get over to Heather. And it is a huge tornado threat, too, that we continue to watch. One of the places we're watching closely is Wichita, Kansas, where we have a 9 out of 10 torque on value, extremely high, meaning a very dangerous situation is setting up. And we're going to turn it over now. Mike Seidel is there. He's in the National Weather Service offices there. And, you know, Mike, it looks like the peak of that severe threat for this area is going to be between 7 p.m. and 2 a.m. So folks still have time to get prepared and know where they need to go when this hits. That's right, and right now our real concern in the short term is the tornado warning. Uh, we've got uh, Chance Hayes here, who is the warning coordination meteorologist up in Russell County. Now it's leaving Russell County, but over here in the corner we've got uh, Gerilyn Billings, who's a meteorologist here at the Weather Service. She is the one putting out the warnings for this Weather Service forecast office, and we're going to go ahead and extend the warning. Oh, absolutely. The warning is going to be extended for about a half an hour. We're concerned with far northwestern Russell County as well, uh, I'm sorry, northeastern Russell County and northwestern Lincoln before it moves on up to the north into Osborne and so on and so forth. And that's another Weather Service jurisdiction, yes, the Hastings, Nebraska Weather correct. Service We're Office. We're basically passing the baton onto the Hastings National Weather Service Office. And Jeff Morrow just showed that. We'll go back to our radar, our TrueView Max radar at the Weather Channel. Jeff Morrow just showed that going up into Lincoln and Osborne counties. Yes. Now we've got unconfirmed reports that it's rain wrapped. Yes, we are getting reports. We, there are several chasers out in the field, and they're reporting brief touchdowns, but it's wrapped in rain, so it's making it very difficult for folks to see. And, and very dangerous. Oh, absolutely. Folks need to be indoors. Other than that, everything else is pretty much off to the west, and has they've been hailers and not yes. rotating, but they're starting to rotate now as they head up uh, north of Russell into uh, southern Nebraska. They are getting into a little bit better environment. The dry line's still way out to the west. That's why the storms are firing out near Dodge. We're just going to have to continue to set, wait, and monitor an issue as needed and our concern really is later on after say six or seven o'clock that's correct once the uh the big spin all that jet uh, stream wind energy comes out of the four corners oh, the jet stream energy the dry line moving to the east it's just setting up for a volatile situation we're just going to have to track the movement of the dry line and see what happens yeah we'll, we'll be here uh we appreciate the weather service office letting us inside because this is really where it all happens again uh Gerilyn billings over there will be watching the radar she's not only watching the doppler but over here is the new dual pole screen it's uh, four paneled I took the course and I want to tell you it's not easy to learn dual pole radar but they were one of the first you were the first or one of the first one of the first we to were scheduled to be first but things uh, got delayed a little bit so we were one of the first okay back to the Heather and Jeff in the studio we'll keep you updated on this area of the country under a high risk today and tonight all right thank you very much Mike Seidel there in Wichita and of course when you are away from your town and we want to continue to bring you the latest warnings here as we follow a severe weather situation that is an extremely dangerous one and it's going to ramp up and only get worse as we go through the afternoon evening and the overnight hours so first of all uh, this large area of red we've actually got a couple of tornado watches that are in effect northern end goes until seven o'clock central southern end of this we're watching until six o'clock central don't be surprised that we're going to see these reissued and they'll be changing in shape a bit but we're going to be watching this system 
all night long as we follow that threat for severe weather and tornadoes. Again, this is going to be an extremely dangerous situation that we're anticipating into the overnight. Here, though, we have a couple of tornado warnings already. You can see Dodge City included in one of these. And you also note here, Inglewood, if you go just to areas to the north and west, we follow this one as well. And these are Doppler indicated tornado warnings. But you see these now? If you live here, head downstairs immediately. You can't fool around when it comes to tornado warning. I know you've been warned before and you say, but nothing happened. That doesn't mean it won't happen with this one. So you always want to immediately head downstairs as we look to or, you know, to whatever safe area that you have already designated and planned to head to. I know all, not all of you have basements. And we watch here too, as we look here in and around Kansas, a couple of other areas where we have these tornado warnings. Now, keep in mind now, if you're some of these areas north of it, like Walnut Creek, you know this is moving in your direction. So you uh, quickly plan out if you haven't thought of it yet, where are you going to go in areas that are well out ahead of this system, but you know that you're in the threat areas. We go through the overnight hours. Think now, what am I going to do if we have a tornado warning? Do you have a friend, a relative somewhere that has a basement that you can go to? Do you have an interior room you can go to? Don't stay in a mobile home. That is one place you do not want to be. You also don't want to be near windows. Uh, we do have areas too in the yellow. Those are severe thunderstorm warnings. So remember red tornado warnings and the yellow ones. Those are severe thunderstorm warnings. Still though with these, you know, we've been seeing some extremely strong winds coming in with some and that too poses a problem along with hail. Hail has been a big issue for us today. We've seen some of this hail that's been around baseball size or even larger. So that is going to be a continued concern. But of course, the biggest threat is going to be tornadoes. We'll be watching this as we go from today into tonight and then still tomorrow watching that threat. And we do have again a tornado threat tomorrow, but not as large of one as what we are anticipating into the evening and overnight. And this is a time and a place, Jeff, as you know, where we are very concerned about an outbreak of tornadoes. So I, I, I can't stress this enough at home. You really need to plan ahead to what you need to do. And, you know, we've got a lot of great ideas on weather.com on what you can do. Yeah, it's a great resource, really. If you're away from your television, I mean, definitely you want to go online here and check out. It's a huge kind of a clearinghouse. You can go in here and get all the information you need. This is our homepage here. And, of course, our top story is the ingredients pointing to this severe weather outbreak. You can go online here. In case you missed Heather there, you you can also pick up a storm watch here, get some of the latest information, and you can also find out where the main area is affected and even the tour cons for some of the biggest cities in the area like Wichita. Look at that, a nine out of 10, Omaha an eight, a seven in Oklahoma City and Kansas City. Again, a lot of information here and not even just in the big cities. You can go here and pick out maybe some of the areas anywhere from South Dakota to Texas everywhere in between and find out what the specific TORCON numbers are. And of course, maybe the most important of all, as Heather was mentioning, your tornado safety and preparedness, preparing for it beforehand, taking action, and of course, the aftermath. Unfortunately, there probably will be an aftermath in some cases, but you need to know what to do now. Yeah, you don't want this to be uh, one of those times where a lot of people are injured and killed. So uh, if you plan ahead, hopefully you and your family can avoid that. Of course, you want to keep it right here on the Weather Channel as our coverage continues with live reports out in the field. And of course, you can go online as I showed you. And also, you can use your mobile device. We are staying live with you all day to track the serious severe weather threat in the central U.S. Severe weather expert Dr. Greg Forbes has issued a TORCON value of 9 for parts of Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Kansas, meaning a 9 out of 10 chance for tornadoes. And there are other areas in the danger zone, too. We could see long-tracked tornadoes, and the threat will continue overnight. We are tracking these storms and telling you how to be prepared next on Weather Center Live. Well, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a PDS watch until 6 p.m. Central Time and for the central parts of Kansas and northwestern Oklahoma. A PDS means it's a particularly dangerous situation because we expect destructive tornadoes, large hailstones, and damaging winds up to 80 miles an hour. 
I'm Vivian Brown along with Carl Parker and we are here all night with live team coverage keeping you ahead of the storms. Meteorologists Jim Cantori, Mike Seidel and Eric Fisher are spanned across the tornado danger zone watching for deteriorating weather conditions. We'll check in with all of them but first we want to start with Carl Parker who's closely watching the radar. See all kinds of storms here uh, up into Omaha and across I-70 and working north and eastward. These are tornado watches in effect until this evening. And we are really just now at the beginning of this event because the strong upper level wind that's coming in that is going to be the upper forcing and providing the shear for these storms is now just beginning to move in. It's going to continue to spread across the area through the late afternoon and right into the evening hours. I want to go to our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, to talk about uh, what's going on today and uh, what we're anticipating. And uh, Greg, uh, as we look at the parameters, the wind fields for this particular severe weather event, they're really at the high end, aren't, aren't they? Yeah, they really are, and they're only going to get worse because the jet, le jet stream level winds are going to increase as a disturbance in Arizona comes toward this region. So we already have some pretty substantial storms. This storm up here near Norfolk, Nebraska, earlier gave three inch teacup diameter hail, most recently golf ball. We have then in red, three storms with tornado warnings on them. We'll take a look at each one of those. The one that's here uh, just northeast now of Russell, Kansas, had 74 mile per hour wind gusts at Russell, Kansas. Now, right in the middle of this cluster, there's some rain wrapped circulation there. May not see the tornado, but it's heading generally toward Tipton, Cocker, Beloit, and Lulu at the time shown there. Sliding farther southwest to near Dodge City, just north and east of Dodge City. Circulation there, a supercell thunderstorm heading toward the Saw Log and the Jetmore area and then down a little bit to the south of Dodge City, another supercell heading toward Lexington. All of these storms uh, capable of producing baseball size hail, tornado warnings for parts of Lincoln, Russell, Mitchell, Osborne, Ford, Hodgman, Clark, and Meade counties. Now, I was mentioning that upper level jet stream, and you can see the big spinning pinwheel here with the strongest winds on the south flank of that working their way now toward New Mexico. They'll, this evening, work their way up into the Kansas, Nebraska area, so that's going to only add wind energy. Surface winds coming in from the south, upper level winds from the southwest, lots of turning for these supercell thunderstorms. So that's why we've issued the greatest threat. We only do this a handful of times per year dangerous tornadoes uh, as well as large hail damaging winds and within that Torcon of nine for parts of south central Nebraska and north central Kansas down into uh, northwest uh, parts of Oklahoma 90% uh, chance of a tornado within 50 miles that threat unfortunately continues overnight tonight I may have to put a greatest threat overnight but dangerous Torcon values in the nighttime hours central Kansas still a nine that's when tornadoes really can be dangerous seven as we come up into the uh, western uh, Iowa eastern Nebraska area and still a seven as we head into the central parts of Oklahoma. The timing of the many of the biggest cities there is unfortunately after dark with uh, even the first round for Omaha 4 p.m. but there could be another round later on and high torque on. So one of the people that's in those areas is Jim Cantori in Lincoln, Nebraska. How you doing Jim? Well, Forbes, I'm not making too many friends around here. Uh, you know, with the red-white game, uh, spring football game just canceled here uh, at about 1 o'clock. Uh, not too many people are happy about that. But you know what? You, just like I, know we just got to get people out of harm's way. Uh, while I got you, Greg, I want to ask you, do you think, I mean, we'll have a round uh, of thunderstorms around 4 o'clock and then potentially another one as we get into this evening, right, near sunset? Yeah, there's Lincoln, a... Uh, Lincoln. Yeah, for Lincoln, there's a, a storm about one hour, maybe just over an hour uh, southwest of you. That's on uh, graphic 17. We can show that where Jim is and then where that storm is. So here is Lincoln right here. The storm with a severe thunderstorm warning on that and, and hail damaging wind threat is heading your way. So that's heading northeast at about uh, 45, 50 miles per hour. So you'll have that round, maybe additional rounds uh, well through the post midnight time frame as I'm seeing it. Right. Right. All right. Thank you, Forbes. I appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Greg Forbes, we will uh, talk about this again, guys. We're right outside Memorial Stadium. You can see behind us. This is obviously a uh, big corn Husker country up here. And today is was there supposed to be their spring football game. All right. Offense plays the defense. Everybody has a good time. They sold about 70,000 tickets. They expected about 60,000 people to come out. But of course, uh, with this particularly dangerous situation that has unfolded here, uh, certainly across the plains today, uh, a wise move, I believe, to uh, cancel this game, get everybody out of harm's way now. We've been seeing 
people uh, walking out and leaving here for the past, uh, I'd say, 45 minutes or so, and that's going to continue to be the case, certainly, as we go through the next hour or so. But by time that storm that Greg talked about, should it go tornadic here, we will probably see, uh, again, nobody around and certainly nobody uh, out on the streets. So that's obviously exactly what we wanted to accomplish and uh, we'll probably do so. Again, guys, a dangerous situation continuing to unfold here in the plains. We have just gotten started, as Greg said, multiple rounds of tornadic storms to affect the plains as we work our way through this afternoon and some of these after dark. Omaha, Topeka, Kansas City, Wichita, and possibly Oklahoma City, you're all in it. And now your local on the 8th, I'm meteorologist Vivian Brown. While you check your local forecast, we continue to track what is expected to be a dangerous weather situation. I want to check in with meteorologist Mike Seidel live in Wichita, Kansas, where there is a Torcon value of 9 for tonight. Mike, give us the latest. Well, we're waiting and watching right now. As you can see overhead, we have a lot of clouds out here, and uh, this is keeping down the insulation and certainly the heating, which would bring these storms more surface-based. We've had a couple showers blow through here, but the worst of the weather, let's go to the radar right now and show you what's going on. Let's take the, uh, the Doppler radar on TrueView Max and look out to our west, uh, out around Dodge City. In fact, Dodge City Weather Service personnel saying they can see the storm out their window. South of there, we just got a report of a cone tornado on the ground from a spotter that's south of Dodge City, that's uh, in the Clark County area, five miles north of Ashland. That's another cell uh, in that area. Uh, meanwhile, uh, here we're concerned about not only the storms, but the impact on all the gatherings tonight here in the Wichita area. These storms will be moving about 50 miles an hour, maybe 55 miles an hour. They can't see them, and they're going to be busy with other things. Uh, it's prom season, so we got a lot of folks at their prom. We have concerts. Uh, I know that there's football games going on and at some of the major universities here in the Plains. All sorts of activities outdoors, and that's one of the things that really concerns us. I would think. And he's right about the proms. In fact, three schools have moved their proms from where they were going to be, two to uh, FEMA-approved storm shelter areas, and one has gone back to the school. They can use the rooms there at the school, safe rooms. And it brings back memories of an F4 tornado which hit in nearby Hoisington back on April 21st of 2001. And everybody at the prom in Hoisington High School went to the basement as that F4 took the roof off the school. And uh, what is kind of eerie is their prom is next Saturday, April 21st, so 12, 11 years to the day. Hopefully next Saturday, the Hoisington High School prom will not be impacted uh, by severe weather. Let's go back to Carl Parker, who has more on the severe weather. Again, Carl, still under, under a watch here, but that will likely change later today. Yeah, and we're going to see uh, the conditions actually getting worse as we go through the afternoon and into the evening hours. So here's a look at this setup, and you've got warm and humid air that is streaming northward and into the plains. There's a dry line right there that's going to be the lifting mechanism already triggering some storms into parts of Kansas and Oklahoma. And then very strong jet stream winds are just now beginning to come out of the southwest. And as they come out and over top of that lower level wind, what they do is they create shear in the atmosphere that creates a rolling motion, and that is what's going to get these storms uh, rotating and continue uh, to bring us tornadic, tornadic storms right through the afternoon and evening. So there are the tornado watches extending from Nebraska and down into central and western Kansas and on down into western parts of Oklahoma. We can focus in on a couple of the warnings here. Uh, two tornado warnings now in southwest Kansas and then we've also got a tornado warning here that is north of I-70 and moving towards Concordia. I want to bring in our severe weather expert Dr. Greg Forbes to talk about uh, what he's seeing on the radar there and uh, Greg what are you looking at here? A great big swirl of, uh, of thunderstorms. It's a little bit like uh, what we saw down near Norman yesterday. Take a look here. We're uh, off to the northwest of Salina, uh, off to the southwest of Concordia, and it gave 74 mile per hour winds within this swirl around the, con uh, around the Russell area a bit earlier. So I wanted to show you here high resolution. Look how all these little arms come in. Here's one, here's one, here's one, all swirling about a common center that's right about in here, very close to Tipton, heading up toward the Bel Beloit area. I'll show you the Doppler velocities on this one, and it uh, is showing pretty strong rotation right in the area. Now look at that red southbound, greens northbound, so a possible tornado almost right over Tipton in Kansas, heading off northeast very quickly at about 50 miles per hour, so toward the Beloit area. So this is one you may not see coming, but you better take shelter. Uh, this one could be one of those rain-wrapped tornadoes. Carl?
And, and Greg, we're already starting to see these uh, rotating storms, and we're now just at the beginning of that strongest upper level wind starting to move across the area. Yeah, it's a combination, Carl, of the upper level winds and we're getting into the heating of the afternoon. Uh, we've had a lot of storms go very early today. Uh, to some extent surprising because some of our numerical models didn't have a very big coverage of storms in their forecast today. So we're actually getting more uh, and earlier than what we thought. So sometimes that will interfere with the subsequent storms. But as you say, the uh, most of the energy is yet to come in terms of the wind and the heating. So it looks like a dangerous day. Hence uh, the particularly dangerous tornado watches as well as our going of high risk and Torcons of nine. All right, Dr. Greg, thank you so much. And uh, we'll be talking to you momentarily uh, farther northward. Tremendous hail here into northeast parts of Nebraska and Petersburg, which is farther along towards the west here. We had a report of three inch hail that's larger than baseball size hail that came in in Norfolk, that storm uh, rotating, making its way towards 29. But these storms are north of the warm front, so less of a tornado threat, more of a hail threat. Couple of severe warnings also now in southwestern Iowa. Heads up there in Des Moines. These storms generally headed your way, and we certainly are going to see severe weather in Iowa today. In fact, here is a look at our thunderstorm outlook. This white area right there, that is not something that we use very often. That's a greatest threat area. We put that on the maps about six times a year on average, maybe a little bit more in some years. And again, we've got the severe threat farther up towards the north and east. But right in here, this is where we're looking for potentially long track, strong or violent tornadoes. So very scary afternoon and evening here. Please stay with us and we'll give you the latest on that. Then that storm is going to lift up and into the western part of the lakes. There could again be tornadoes early tomorrow here in the western lakes. Then farther southward, more of a damaging wind threat. But there could be tornadoes within that line. Vivian. And for now, we are following the severe weather. In fact, we have storm chasers out across central. Oklahoma. They are following the storms, of course, watching for any development. The skies are already very, very ominous. We have live conditions for you all day to help keep you prepared for this dangerous, severe weather threat. Welcome back to our coverage of a tornado outbreak, which is now underway. Tornadic storms rolling across parts of western and central Kansas. And also now there is a tornado warning in Iowa. As we focus in on a couple of these cells, you can see these supercell storms now in southwestern parts of Kansas. Want to bring in our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, to talk about uh, these cells. And Greg, looks like these are going to be going for some time yet. Yeah, indeed. We have two storms now in southwest Kansas that have confirmed tornadoes, sighted tornadoes on them. One of them is off now to the north and east of Dodge City, and it is a pretty impressive storm here. Look how it has put out a gust front here uh, in blue. The tornado hiding right inside this little notch here where we go from uh, inflow that's in uh, red there to the rear flank downdraft that wraps around. Spotted large cone tornado. We're talking about Edwards, Ford, Hodgman, Pawnee counties there. Uh, storm heading toward the Hanston, the Gray, the Burdett areas, uh, moving quickly off toward the northeast at about 45 miles per hour. Sliding a bit farther down then to the south of Dodge City, also a sighted spotted tornado with this storm, talking about uh, uh, possible tornadoes uh, there as well, uh, coming toward the Kingsdown, the Buckland, the Mullenville area. So dangerous storms there with now confirmed tornadoes in southwest parts of Kansas. Carl? And Greg, on the cells, we have uh, reports now of power poles down, now power lines down across Highway 18 uh, between Lucas and Luray. So uh, certainly those storms are, in fact, producing some damage right now. There's also now a tornado warning in north central Kansas, that for Mitchell and Osborne County. You see this uh, big high precipitation supercell now north of 70. Let's take a look inside the storm and see the rotation here and a remarkable rotation signature as we look at that on 13. That's now that storm uh, moving off towards northeast about uh, 40, 45 miles an hour. And you can really see that couplet, as we call it. Don't know if we're going to be able to go to that or not uh, on graphics 13. But again, that cell is uh, moving northeast for now. And here we go. Uh, there you see right in here. That is the circulation with the storm. Uh, sometimes you just see an area of red and green. But also, in this case, you can actually sort of see sort of a spiraling effect, a kind of a whirling effect there. So there is pronounced rotation within that cell. And let's go back to the other radar. Uh, certainly there's a lot of precipitation associated with this storm. So this storm is most likely going to be wrapped in rain. You're not going to be able to see it as it's moving in. So heads up there for a possible tornado, Mitchell and Osborne counties. Also, there is now a new tornado warning in southwestern Iowa that for Page and Fremont counties, that cell is moving northeast at 30 miles an hour. So this is in the southwest part of the state there and moving up towards the uh, uh, the I-80 corridor gradually moving now northeast at about 30 miles an hour. Also, 
big up, very heavy rain producing storm now to the east of Norfolk and coming towards 29. So again today we are talking about a very high risk for significant tornadoes, parts of Nebraska, Kansas and down into Oklahoma. It is now just underway. This threat is going to continue right through the evening and even into the overnight hours. Vivian. Well, Carl, as you just showed us, most of the storms are just north of Oklahoma City right now, but in Oklahoma we've already seen tornado damage this week. Yesterday, a twister moved through Norman, Oklahoma, leaving a path of destruction. And meteorologist Eric Fisher is there live with a look at the damage. Eric. Thanks, Vivian. We were down in Norman, Oklahoma earlier on this morning. Let's go right to it and show you some of the sites from Norman. Now, a lot of the locals there will tell you Norman has a bubble around it. They don't expect tornadoes. They always say they see them somewhere else, but not in their town. That was not the case yesterday. Has some pretty significant damage. A lot of uh, apartment buildings had some uh, structural damage to them. A lot of trees, power lines coming down. People were out in force earlier on today, and I'm sure they are right now starting to pick up some of those pieces. We're just hoping that all this work that our friends and family have done today doesn't end up back in the yard. All right, now here we go again. We're expecting later on this afternoon and tonight dangerous storms, perhaps more significant than we saw during the day yesterday. And the story here, you can look right across Lake Hefner. Some of the white capping already going on well out ahead of any of these storms. Gusty winds out of the southeast. Even a couple of kite borders out there right now. I'm sure they'll be going in in pretty short order. Uh, we're taking a look at our dry line to the west. That's going to be our mechanism for creating the storms. They're just starting to develop right now in western Oklahoma, northern Texas, and the Panhandle areas. Those are the storms that will be moving east. Here in Oklahoma City, Vivian, we're expecting around sundown, likely some of those strongest storms to arrive. That's right. We will not put our guards down just yet, even though some of the storms have moved off to the east. We'll keep it locked to the Weather Channel. We are Tornado Central. Right now, again, those storms moving across eastern Kansas. Thank you so much for joining us on uh, the Weather Channel. You know, the Storm Prediction Center has issued two PDS watches for the central part of the country. A PDS means that it's a particularly dangerous situation, and we expect destructive tornadoes, large hailstones, and damaging winds that could exceed 70 miles an hour. I'm Vivian Brown, along with Carl Parker, and we're here all night with live team coverage, keeping you ahead of these storms. Now, meteorologists Jim Cantori, Mike Seidel, and Eric Fisher spanned across the tornado danger zone watching for deteriorating weather conditions. We'll check in with them all, of course, as we progress throughout the afternoon. But I want to start with Carl Parker, who's watching the radar very closely. Long tracks, strong and violent tornadoes are what we're anticipating, and already there have been reports of tornadoes in southwestern Kansas and some damage with those. You can see the watch areas that now extend through Nebraska and down into western Kansas and into Oklahoma. Huge explosive development here along the dry line in west central parts of Kansas and reaching down into Oklahoma. And right now there are several tornado warnings in effect, a couple in southwestern Kansas, one now just north of 70, a high precipitation supercell, rain wrapped tornado there, so it's going to be very difficult to see. And then farther northward, we've got a couple more warnings, one in southwest Iowa, and now a warning into southwestern Nebraska, so heads up there in Lincoln that's generally moving off towards the north and east. I want to bring in our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, to talk about this threat. And uh, Greg, this is really just the beginning of this. Yeah, things are really ramping up now, Carl, as you showed with five storms with tornado warnings on it. It's going to continue that way ever so slowly moving east. And with these storms moving slowly, some places could get hit or in the vicinity several times. Let's take a look. We'll take a tour of those storms. Carl showed five storms with tornado warnings on them. One of them brand new. It's uh, kind of along the warm front off to the south and east of Omaha here in Iowa. Uh, some of the communities that are in the path of that Doppler indicated tornado include uh, from Essex over to Villasca. Then we head down to the south and west of Lincoln, Nebraska, right across the border from Kansas, Deschler, the Hebron, and the Fairbury areas as that storm moves off toward the east northeast at about 30 miles per hour. Going to this big cluster storm with possible rain wrap tornado heading generally toward the Jewel area. Again, some of the other locations in the timelines inside the boxes. And then the two storms in southwest Kansas, both uh, one northeast, one southeast of Dodge City, both of these with sighted tornadoes. Uh, one of them now getting close to the Orwell area will head in between the Marina and the Pleasant Ridge area and then a little bit farther to the south and east of Dodge City, a uh, one with a sighted tornado heading now toward the Buckland area and generally toward the Greensburg, Kansas area. Of course, that will be a particular concern. They were hit so bad by 
EF-5 tornado back in 2007. All of this is well out ahead of the biggest cold pocket of the entire uh, episode here that's still in Arizona. Some pretty strong winds, though, in the jet stream blasting out ahead of that, adding wind energy. And you can see here in green in this water vapor satellite imagery, the storms have just blossomed in response to that in the heating of the afternoon. So all of these ingredients coming together, a lot of rich, warm, unstable air, uh, greatest threat area that we issue in white a few times per year. And within that, Torcon values, 9, 90% chance of a tornado there, parts of central Nebraska into central Kansas, down into northwest Oklahoma, and uh, that will continue into the evening hours. I haven't put a greatest threat yet tonight, but we could see the storms go severe as far as the Twin Cities into Kansas City and farther down into Texas. I've given still in the overnight hours, after dark hours, nine Torcon for central parts of Kansas, a seven for the Iowa Nebraska region as that uh, round of storms to your west comes in and parts of central Oklahoma a seven. The timing for some of the biggest cities with many of the storms off to your west and slowly moving in is unfortunately in many places going to be after dark with Omaha. Some of the storms already near you, but uh, another round maybe an, until 1 a.m. And then tomorrow, uh, as this big surface low, the upper jet pushes off to the north and east, even in the morning hours into the afternoon hours, Wisconsin, I've given a Torcon of six for tomorrow. So still, uh, while some of the ingredients are heading toward the Great Lakes and then a big long tail of spotty winds and hail and damaging uh, possible tornadoes even all the way into Texas. So one of the locations that has those multiple rounds of severe threats, Lincoln, Nebraska, that's where our Jim Cantore is located. Yeah, hey, Dr. Forbes, uh, we uh, obviously have had a big thing unfold here already for the red-white uh, spring football game. It's been canceled, and I want to talk to Fred Cooten, who's uh, with me. He's a big fan. He's been uh, a Cornhusker fan ever since he was born, as he tells me. And, Fred, this is kind of amazing, isn't it, when you think about it? This is. Uh, it's a real disappointment because uh, this is a huge thing in Nebraska where you get 60,000 fans to uh, basically a glorified a scrimmage. scrimmage. Right. Yeah, right. and uh, it's, it's just a great thing for the state. It's a way for us to come together and halfway between you know the end of the football season the beginning again and and the fans just love to get together and socialize and have a good time at the stadium one time when we're not during the regular season so do you think this was a good idea to cancel this you know it's very disappointing people came from as far away as Colorado and my wife just talked to a guy from Michigan who said that he's really disappointed and I actually thought she was an official here and wonder if he could get his money back but so but that's, I mean that's, at the end of the day with what we have coming at us right now. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. I think the weather is too threatening and to have 60,000 people in one place with uh, nowhere really to go in the case of an emergency like a tornado. And you're saying they won't, won't reschedule it? I, I heard uh, they talk, talked to Coach Polini after the game, the, the uh, announcers, and he indicated that they were going to just move on with their practice schedule and probably not do anything. That's what I heard. Now, I don't right. know if that that's what hearsay. So. Well, the good news is there'll be football in the fall. You bet. Go All Huskers. Right. All right. Thanks, Fred. We appreciate that. <laughs> Obviously, uh, guys, we haven't gotten into the worst of this yet. We had one round of rain, which actually has caused some flooding, uh, Vivian. Interstate 80, uh, mile marker 420. Uh, Fred tells me that's about halfway between Lincoln and Omaha, right around the Greenwood area. We have backup now on Interstate 80 because of that flooding. And, boy, I hope they get that cleared out, especially with what we got coming at us. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. Of course, you want to keep it tuned to the Weather Channel for continuing storm coverage right here. We'll be back. And now your local on the 8th. I'm meteorologist Vivian Brown. And while you check your local conditions, we continue to track what could be a dangerous severe weather outbreak today. I want to bring in meteorologist Mike Seidel live from Wichita, Kansas, where there was a Torcon value today of 9. That means a 9 out of 10 chance of tornadoes. Mike, you're watching the storms off to your west with a very weary eye. Yeah, so far so good here in Wichita. We're uh, certainly in the moist air mass. Our dew points are in the 60s, uh, which measures the moisture at the surface. It's well west of here along that dry line where the storms have been firing up this afternoon. Uh, either side of Dodge City, Kansas, we've had a couple of reports of uh, touchdowns. One uh, certainly uh, in the Ashland area, also near Tipton, and uh, some minor damage, some aluminum blown around. So as far as damage and strong tornadoes go, uh, no reports yet, but things are becoming more conducive to these violent long track tornadoes as the upper level wind energy comes out of the four corners. We've got heating to the west. As you can see here, skies are cloudy. Also over my shoulder is the ray dome. 
And uh, this is Doppler and also dual pole now. They got the dual pole in here, which helps the Weather Service uh, uh, employees, staffers in there. And by the way, they're adding additional staffing this afternoon and this evening. Take a close look at the storms. But again, outside of a few showers here, uh, no concerns. But that threat will ramp up uh, certainly after dinner time tonight. And the reason I get a little bit nervous is because I want folks to be aware of the situation. I don't want them to be complacent. And when warnings are issued, the National Weather Service legitimately feels that there is a threat to their life. And we want them to react immediately as opposed to trying to get more information before they take shelter. And this is one of those National Weather Service offices where they're using uh, the kind of the heightened awareness and the wording of those warnings, whether because it's large hail, uh, wind gusts 80 miles an hour or higher, or uh, a tornado that may be a strong or a long track tornado that's produced a lot of damage. So they'll be implementing that if necessary this evening right out here at the National Weather Service office in Wichita. By the way, they just had a storm spotter training session this morning. 134 showed up to be uh, storm spotters. We've got those all over Kansas right now, all over the plains. And a lot of times they're the first, uh, certainly first word we get on twisters if they're on the ground, if they're not reported by, say, uh, law enforcement. So it's going to be a, a very active uh, late afternoon through evening. Dr. Forbes saying 9 p.m. to about 2 a.m. in the Wichita area. If we don't get the twisters, then we're concerned about a squall line, uh, Vivian, which could produce large hail and those quick tornadoes that spin up on those uh, those uh, squall lines and we get the the potential for wind gust over 75 or 80 miles an hour so either way we're going to have some weather issues here this evening and everybody is hunkered down three high school proms have switched their locations to safer spots because of the impending storm threat vivian all right hunkered down in wichita kansas and rightfully so thank you very much mike i'll tell you what let's take a closer look at those storms just to the west of wichita here's carl all right, Mike mentioned the fact that the upper level wind energy is going to be coming out of the southwest. And here is that uh, upper level low right in here. Already some of that strong jet stream energy is coming out. And that's why we're starting to see these tornadic storms. But it actually gets a lot stronger farther south and west. So the worst of uh, the strongest of the wind has yet to come out. And that is only going to raise that threat for tornadoes. Now at the surface, warm and humid air is streaming up into the system. Storms are now firing along the dry line here into western parts of Kansas. Tornado watches are up in Nebraska and Kansas and down into Oklahoma. These are PDS watches, particularly dangerous situation. And there's a look at the warnings that are now in effect. The movement on these storms, as is often the case when you've got severe weather, is very fast off to the northeast, about 40, 45, in some cases, 50 miles an hour. Two tornado warnings now into southwestern Kansas. I want to focus in on this cell in the southern part of the state. And uh, let's go over to the other radar and take a closer look at this. Now, I know you're getting concerned about this in Greensburg. We were hit very very hard by a tornado in 2007. Uh, the area of concern is going to be right here and it's very close to Buckland. It's probably going to be coming up towards uh, Millersburg. It may pass to the west of Greensburg. At least it kind of looks like that right now, but these storms can change direction. So please stay tuned. We'll give you the latest on that. I uh, also want to show you to the north. We've got an area of heavy rain and storms now coming across parts of northern Kansas and warnings within those rain wrapped tornadoes, the threat between 70 and 80 right now. Vivian. Well, I'll tell you what, this weekend, extremely dangerous, and that's why it's important to be prepared now. Meteorologist Chris Warren shows us what to do if you're caught in your vehicle during a hailstorm or a tornado. So I created TORCON, the Tornado Condition Index, to help our viewers to understand which days might be the most active, the most dangerous in terms of tornadoes on a scale of 0 to 10. Here, this eight day would mean there's a pretty high chance of a tornado in that vicinity, 80% chance of a tornado within 50 miles of that location. All right, with that said, we're looking at a nine out of 10 chance of tornadoes today. Here's a look at the Torricon index that our severe weather expert has already given. And again, a nine out of 10 chance there in central Kansas. So if you're in central Kansas, please be aware that there is a serious threat of tornadoes in your area for the rest of the evening. We are here, of course, keeping you updated on the latest. Carl? 
All right, I want to get you up to date on uh, the severe weather threat right now and a number of tornado warnings to tell you about. Uh, these storms are generally moving off now towards the northeast at about uh, 40 to 45 miles an hour. Let's go over to max one and I'll show you what's going on with the storms right now. Uh, the upper level wind that is the trigger for this severe weather is now just beginning to come into the central plains and that's actually going to be increasing over the next several hours. So the tornado threat is uh, also probably going to be increasing going forward though, though we are just now getting into the peak heating of the day. Now, as we look at the warnings here, you can see there's a string of them, a couple of warnings in southwestern parts of Kansas, another couple of warnings now uh, just south of the state line there between Kansas and Nebraska and just north of that state line. So we'll zoom in and take a look at a couple of these cells. Uh, we've got one of these cells now making its way northward here uh, from Buckland, and that's going to coming up. Uh, towards the Greensburg area, but it looks like it wants to stay to the west of Greensburg. Let's take a, not, a look at another radar view, and you can see this cell uh, right in here. It's where that rotation is that is now just to the east of Buckland and it's moving off to the northeast. Here is Greensburg. This is the town that was hit very hard by a tornado, really just wiped out by a tornado in 2007. And I know you're nervous about the situation. It looks like the center of this storm uh, where the rotation is is going to be passing to the west and northwest of Greensburg. That's how it appears right now as that moves off towards the northeast. But certainly it's going to be a threat as it comes up through this area. Uh, Buckland is uh, now seeing, sitting right over that rotation. Uh, another location now uh, right over that area as well. Uh, and I had that on the map just a moment ago. I'll get that for you in just a minute. And uh, let's take a look at what else is going on. We've got another cell to the north of that. And uh, that is now Edwards, Hodgman, Ness, Pawnee, and Rush County. That cell is moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. Uh, Gray and Burdett immediately in the path of this storm. So please take cover immediately in Gray and also in Burdett. And as we take you farther northward, now these are more classic supercells, but farther northward, you've got these big complexes of storms that are seeing some rotation within them. So there is a tornado threat, but very heavy rain on top of that. Large hail, and uh, there's going to be a flood threat here. Vivian? Well, tonight, of course, will be a particularly dangerous night since we're expecting tornadoes in the overnight hours. But there are ways to make sure that you know about tornadoes. Even we are staying live with you all day to track the serious severe weather threat in the central U.S. Severe weather expert Dr. Greg Forbes has issued a Torcon value of nine for parts of Oklahoma, Nebraska and Kansas, meaning a nine out of 10 chance for tornadoes. And there are other areas in the danger zone, too. We could see long-lived tornadoes, and the threat will continue overnight. We are tracking these storms and telling you how to be prepared, next on Weather Center Live. The Storm Prediction Center has issued four tornado watches. Two of them are PDSs. Now, a PDS watch means it's a particularly dangerous situation because we expect destructive tornadoes, large hailstones, and damaging winds up to 80 miles an hour. I'm Vivian Brown along with Carl Parker, and we are here all night with live team coverage keeping you ahead of the storms. Meteorologists Jim Cantori, Mike Seidel, and Eric Fisher are spanned across the tornado danger zone watching for deteriorating deteriorating weather conditions. We'll check in with them all. But I want to start with Carl Parker, who's closely watching the radar right now. Carl. All right, we want to show you where the watches are right now. And there is a new watch area, a new tornado watch area in southwestern Iowa. And that going until uh, 9 o'clock tonight. The watch is also extending down through Nebraska and Kansas and into Iowa. You can see that here on uh, Max 6. And there's a look, a closer look for you. Uh, you see the new watch area, which is now uh, just south and west of Des Moines and across 80, then back across 80, another watch area, uh, that right down into Kansas and then down into Oklahoma. So a pretty large area being implicated, Greg, and uh, everything really just coming together, uh, unlike it does many times of the year. Yeah, indeed, and we've had already uh, about five reports of tornadoes. So far, they seem to be kind of brief. We'll hope that continues to be the case, but unfortunately, uh, we're expecting them to lengthen as some of that upper air wind energy comes in. Right now, tornado warnings uh, appear to have, well, still one in south central parts of Nebraska, two down in southwest parts of Kansas, each of which have had reported tornadoes. We'll start with the southwest Kansas. Look at this storm. This is getting very close to Greensburg, Kansas, and so I'm going to show you a zoom in on this one. Here is Greensburg, Kansas, hit in 2007. 
a very elongated storm with a wee little hook that wraps around. The tornado would be sitting right in there. So it's very close, just a mile or so now away from the Mullenville area. This one is going to miss the heart of Greensburg going a few miles off toward the north and west. An interesting uh, storm structure to this one. Then we'll slide up off to the north and east of Dodge City. Uh, we have a tornado. This one also has produced a tornado. Places in the path now uh, include Ash Valley in the Pioneer area. The time's approximately showing up here. Then we slide up. This storm that had been that big swirling mass of thunderstorms, looking more like a bow echo at the moment. Could be very, very strong winds coming into Concordia, Kansas. And a brand new tornado warning issued on that one. Carla, you may have some info on that Yeah, one. that's southeastern Jewel County. Uh, watch out there in Montrose and Formoso. Uh, that moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. And uh, Greg, that's likely to be a rain wrap tornado there. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's certainly in a transition. You could also get some storms that are land spouts out on the leading edge of that bow. Uh, then uh, up into south central parts of Nebraska, southeast Nebraska, tornado warning there uh, coming toward places like Dakin and the Plymouth area. The timeline's approximately there. So it's a, an active day. We've been referring to the fact it's going to get worse, and that's because this big spinning cold upper low is still over Arizona. There is a jet stream on its flanks that is uh, spreading off to the north and east. Here in the water vapor imagery, when the clouds get real high, you see them with green high tops. And a storm's just exploding there from the Oklahoma Panhandle up into Nebraska in response to that jet stream energy. So accordingly, highest risk area in white from parts of central Nebraska down into parts of Kansas and northwest Oklahoma with Torcon values of nine for south central Nebraska down into Kansas and even as we build into northwest Oklahoma. It won't be done this afternoon. I'll have to evaluate whether I need a greatest threat overnight. But Torcon values continue into the past dark hours of nine in central Kansas, seven for the Nebraska Iowa area, and still seven at least for central parts of Oklahoma. So one of the places that's under threat later on is uh, the Lincoln, Nebraska area where Jim Cantori is stationed. Jim? Yeah, Greg, and in the meantime, we're seeing uh, these uh, rain-producing thunderstorms. I mean, tremendous rainfall. We've had enough rain even to close uh, I-80 for a while uh, between Lincoln and Omaha. So people that are leaving the stadium because the red-white spring football game was canceled, we're standing right in front of Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, those folks are pretty much clearing out. Most of the people are gone now and out of Lincoln and certainly uh, out of harm's way, but there's still a lot of people on the roads, and they're dealing with very, very heavy rain. we got another round coming at us, as you guys have been showing uh, out of Kansas here. This this stuff is going to produce some rain, probably some hail as well. Again, uh, nothing tornadic yet, but the night is young, as Greg mentioned. We will have several rounds, but the good news is we don't have 60,000 people sitting in the stadium right now, all right, because they canceled that game. This game, apparently, from what I understand, has been played every year since 1950. So, uh, obviously, a lot of bummed Cornhusker fans, but uh, as meteorologists and people trying to get people out of harm's way, we're pretty happy about uh, the decision that they made in through here. At this point, no reschedule uh, for this game has been made, and they may not make one uh, from what we're hearing in through here. So, guys, uh, again, uh, we're safe and sound here at Memorial Stadium. Uh, other than that, we'll see what happens uh, with the rest of the evening, which appears to be something that's in the making of Vivian. I think we had a long night ahead of us. Back to and you. Of course, we will be here, of course, following any storm development. Thank you very much, Jim. Well, still ahead, our live team coverage takes us to Wichita, Kansas, where Dr. Forbes has issued a Toycon value of nine for tonight. That's where meteorologist Mike Seidel is at this hour. Hey, Viv, a lot of straight line winds, gradient wind from the uh the pressure falling off, big pressure gradient. We've had gusts of 41 miles an hour out here this afternoon. All the action so far well to our west along the dry line. We'll talk to the National Weather Service warning coordinating meteorologist coming up in a moment. Here all evening, of course, preparing you and updating you on the latest information on this very dangerous threat. Please keep it tuned to the Weather Channel for the latest.